Hi guys, Amy Parvana here from Solac Advisors Institute. For those of you not familiar with who we are, we are sales management, uh, sales coaching, leadership development, and outsource chief marketing officer platform, working with the service industry, specifically financial, legal, and accounting. In this video, I wanted to talk further about a topic I've spoken about in my sales manual, which you could find in the link below. You could buy it on Amazon. Um, and what that um, sales manual talks about is actually how to calculate the size of your weighted average uh, pipeline. Um, so the calculation is very simple. What's the size of the opportunity? multiplied by what's the size of the percentage of close of that opportunity and you multiply that per lead and then you sum it up and you find out your weighted average pipeline size so we all know the lead size um, revenue potential the lead um, you know assets under management but the part that's subjective is the actual percentage of close how can you calculate to know what are the chances of someone closing with you or working with you and in this video, I wanted to talk about signs to look for uh, that will show if someone is actually really not a good prospect. So why are they even on your list? Or maybe the chances of closing are much lower than you expect. But alternatively, those same signs, if they are the opposite, they could increase your percentage of close. Those are really good signs to look for. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the five signs um, I look for in a prospect to know if either I should remove them from my list or completely lower it down. Let's say if it's from, you know, 100% uh, being definitely closing, uh, remove it 10% lower each time, um, depending on how many of these signs they show. So again, you could learn more about this in my sales manual, or you could further talk about this by speaking um, using the link below with me. Uh, but in, in between then, um, watch this video and look for these five signs. And if you don't agree with some of them, if I am completely wrong, or if um, someone has defied my these rules that I'm going to be talking about, look, there's exceptions to every rule. But I think in general, these rules, if they are broken, they're, they mean that someone is a bad prospect. And if they actually are the opposite, it means someone's a very good prospect. So let's talk about them and let me know what you think. Let's start. Um, here is the number one way to know if someone is going to be not a good prospect for you. And again, like I said, you may have had someone who's an exception to this, but is, uh, it should, if you started with 100, 100% 100 being someone who is a really good prospect, each one of these brings it down lower and lower. So the number one uh, thing I look for that gives me an indication that someone's a waste of my time is if they won't fill out my calendar scheduling app or if they won't fill out my form. What do I mean by that? If you have a system in setting up meetings, let's say it's you're using LinkedIn or you're doing cold calling or, or you're doing email blast, if you have uh, someone that's shown, okay, fine, I'll set up a call with you. If you send them your form to get some more background color on them, but they refuse to fill that out, um, it's already a really bad warning sign. And you're gonna be going into that meeting potentially with the person not even showing up because they don't even have the wherewithal or the confidence or the manners for that, uh, for lack of a better term, to give you the time of day to fill out the calendar link or the form that could give you some more background about them. But if someone does fill it out, that's a really great sign. That means they've gone out of their way to want to talk to you, and that will bring up the percentage of the waiting for how much someone's worth your time to talk to. Okay, here's the number two way to find out if someone is a bad prospect or if they are not doing this to show that someone is a good prospect. So the number two um, sign I look for in a prospect is seeing how many times they have switched from one service to another 
in your line of work. So if you, for example, are a financial advisor and the person starts talking and he says, yeah, I used to be at Raymond James and then I went to Edward Jones and then I'm at Merrill Lynch and now I'm interested in talking to you. What's going on there that they keep switching firms one after the next? Is there so much um, hatred or so much expectations on each person that you may also not be able to meet? So it'll be great to close this opportunity, but if this person is gonna bounce around right after they start working with you, that's not a good sign. The number three sign I look for is if someone is already utilizing some of your services, uh, but with all parts of it being compartmentalized into multiple different avenues. Um, and what that means to me is that this person is a micromanager and that they are not able to give up enough control for you to move the dial. So again, for example, if you are a wealth manager and this person is doing their equities at one firm, they're doing your alternative somewhere else, it just means that this person is really looking to kind of see what you've got. And we all know it's very hard to move the dial when you've only got a piece of the, the action, of, for lack of a better term again. Um, so again, it's not a good sign when someone is throwing darts here and there. Um, it's just, to me, it's a bad sign. So when I first start talking to someone, if I find out that they're doing this here, they're doing that there, I actually let them know you're not a good fit for what we do. Um, because I don't want to be talking to someone who is playing the game or playing the field and going from one firm to another. Just not a good sign. And you should be on the lookout for that, too. Um, so if someone um, is, um, you know, interested in what you do, let's say you're a CPA and they are doing one type here, one type there, one type of form here, one type of form there. Again, um, do you want to be one of many or do you want to have a holistic view of what this person does so that's the number three thing that i look for in a prospect okay guys now let's talk about the fourth way i look for a prospect sign to see if they are a complete waste of my time and if they show the opposite that that means they're a really good prospect for me to pursue and want to work with um, and the number four thing i look for and i've written about this i'll hyperlink the article below is after i have the meeting um after i speak with them if i write them a thank you email and i always try to do that within 24 hours even if i have it on a uh, on a friday i write them that same day saying that i'm going to be writing them back on monday you really don't want more than 24 hours of communication gap right after you have the call in fact i have gone on meetings and right from the airport i write them that, that email there's no excuse for you to not write within 24 hours but if i write that and they don't reply that is a massive warning sign and if they do reply that is a very positive sign if you go too long and you the person doesn't write within a day or two after your thank you email or follow-up email we could kind of reduce that percentage of likelihood that this person will work with you. Okay, and now I want to talk about the number five sign uh, that I look for in a prospect to see if they are a good use of my time or if they are a complete waste of my time. And that is if the person on the meeting does not engage in any uh, long conversation, if they're sitting just like this, or if they don't want to give any details about themselves. Again, if you're doing all the talking, that's not a good sign. That will be something that you should be looking for. And you could really judge yourself on that too. You could say, was this person talking? Talking, did I learn a lot? If they talk too long, that's another bad sign. But if they don't talk enough and they, they don't answer your questions, that's problematic. And if you don't know what questions to ask, again, that's where the sales coaching could come in. So a lot of this is covered in my sales manual, which you could see on the link below. You can find it on Amazon. It's a really great deal for all of my ideas written down. Uh, and if you wanted to talk about our coaching program, fill out the link below. Thank you guys. Talk to you soon.